For almost 20 years, I have built and tested the effects of, on people of immersive virtual reality. What is this woman doing? She sees the world just like we do. There's a floor that she feels, she walks around, she hears sounds, she feels virtual touch, but in her version of the world, there's a chasm. It's 10 meters deep and we put a very rickety plank over it. Her task is to tiptoe across that plank. Now if she steps off, in her mind, she actually falls down. When virtual reality is done well, it's an actual experience. The brain treats it as real. We call this presence. In my lab, about a third of the people who I bring in, and I bring in about a thousand people per year, they refuse to step off that plank. The ones that do, they shriek. They sweat. And sometimes they fall into my arms. That's why Cody is there spotting that woman, because people actually fall down. It's that persuasive. We're at a tipping point in the history of this technology. On the left, you can see the head-mounted display that I was using up until 2014. It literally cost more than my car. On the right, you can see what we're using now. It costs less than the price of a video game. It's going to be in living rooms everywhere this holiday season. <laughs> the smart money, the big money, is betting that video games are going to be the killer app. And I mean the killer app. In my lab for the last 20 years, we've been developing non-lethal applications of virtual reality. We've run hundreds of experiments that show that a virtual reality experience is profound. It changes the way you think of yourself. It changes the way you behave. It changes the way that you think about others. One of these areas is conservation. So everybody in this room, we want to be green. We want to conserve. But it turns out it's really hard to do this. Everyday behaviors are hard to change. That's where virtual reality comes in. The New York Times read an article about toilet paper. It turns out that soft, fluffy toilet paper that we all love, it comes from non-recycled paper. If you're using that soft, fluffy toilet paper, you are cutting down trees. You are leading to deforestation. So this article comes out in the New York Times, but it doesn't change anything despite being written so brilliantly. So I live with the hippies in Northern California. It's the crunchiest place on the planet, but when I go into the supermarket, I can't find recycled toilet paper. So how do you actually change behavior? We ran an experiment where subjects came to the lab, they put on the helmet, they had a haptic device that shook their hands like a chainsaw, and we forced them to cut down trees. The trees crashed into the floor, banged their feet up. It feels very real. In fact, people that go through this, they say to me, Jeremy, every time I go through that toilet paper aisle, I think of you. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. In our experiments, we had three groups. One group cut down a tree in virtual reality. The second group saw a video of a tree being cut down. And the third group read a beautifully written narrative of what it'd be like to cut down a tree. All three groups said, after this treatment, that they wanted to use less paper. But we followed their behavior after the study, and only the virtual reality group changed. They used 20% less paper than the rest of the groups. So virtual reality provides the best of both worlds. The brain treats it as real, but we don't actually have to t kill trees to teach you conservation. Many of you guys have been to Italy. Some of you have actually been to the island of Ischia off the coast of Italy. Some of you might have gone to this beautiful castle on your sightseeing journey. I'd venture to say that none of you have scuba dived to see the underwater volcanic vents on this rocky reef. Why does a third of the United States, a third of the people in the United States not believe that climate change poses a serious threat, whereas almost, all science, whereas almost all scientists do. If I could bring the world, everybody in this country, to this particular reef and show them these volcanic vents, I could change minds about climate change. When people experience something directly, 
They see it in a different light. This quote is from Dr. Jane Lubchenco, who was the head of the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration under President Obama for four years. Dr. Lubchenco witnessed more natural disasters in her four-year term than in any four-year term in U.S. history. She had a heartbreaking job. Her job was to go and visit these sites and help victims of natural disasters, for example, Hurricane Sandy. What Dr. Lubchenco learned is that experience trumps skepticism. Doesn't matter what your politics are, if a natural disaster destroys your hometown, you believe in climate change. In virtual reality, disaster is free. I hit a button, it happens, and nobody gets hurt. So let's go back to Ischia. These volcanic vents spew pure carbon dioxide. This is very special because typically when there's volcanic vents, they also have some toxic chemical, for example, sulfur. These guys are pure carbon dioxide, so they show us the future of all of the oceans in the world. It turns out that 20% of human-produced carbon dioxide gets absorbed by the oceans. So think of this special tiny vent off the island of Ischia as the canary in the coal mine. This is warning us of danger to come. When carbon dioxide hits the ocean, a chemical reaction occurs where the water becomes more acidic. When the water becomes more acidic, the coral and other life forms have struggled to find food, struggle to fortify their cells, and they die. In the past two centuries, our oceans have increased in acidity, a staggering 25% in the last two centuries, and this rate is accelerating. So what's going to happen to all the life in the ocean? At this point, I'd like to introduce my marine science colleagues, Theo McKelly and Christy Croker. They have been using this reef as a crystal ball for the last decade to see how ocean acidification, human product produced carbon dioxide, is going to change all of our oceans. Here you can see them scuba diving, doing a species count to understand how it will affect life in the ocean. Here are two zones on their reef. On the left is the healthy reef. It has a normal ocean chemistry. You can see the white coral there. You can see the red coral there. You can see lots of life diversity. On the right is an area of the reef that's closer to these volcanic vents. This area simulates how all of our oceans will look by the year 2100. 85 years from now, this is how all of our oceans will look. Notice there's no coral. And notice how algae has completely taken over the scene and stifled the rest of the life that's there. Carbon dioxide production is going to devastate the ocean. Scientists know this. They publish these findings in the top journal on the planet. But humans don't. In this room, most people have not heard of ocean acidification. Why not? And the answer is because you don't have a direct experience. I can't bring all of you to Ischia, but I can bring Ischia to you. Would you guys like to go on a field trip? All right, who wants to go? Ah. Oh. I love field trips and I love bringing my little field trip pack of technology like I always do on every field trip ever. All right. All right. I'm going to put on this. All right, I'm going in. I'm in. <laughs> I seem to have stopped time. OK, fishies. Yes, just keep swimming. This is great. I see coral. I see eels. This is really blue and lovely. Now things are changing. I see bubbles of doom killing everything around me. <laughs> And now it's all brown and sad. Yeah, okay, so that was, that was bad. I don't want bubbles of doom. Can I make it stop? All right. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome home. Thank you. All right. 
So my colleague Roy P., who's a pioneering educational technologist, and I, for the last few years, have been building a field trip. It's a 15-minute journey where you go and visit Ischia, you do scavenger hunts to see how the species have changed, you fast forward in time to see the future and come back, and we use a technique called body transfer, developed by neuroscientists, where you literally become an animal on the reef and you feel the devastation happen firsthand to you. We've taken this simulation for the last few years, we've tested it in classrooms at Stanford, we've brought it to high schools for field testing, we've brought it to festivals for informal learning, sessions at museum. It works. But what do we know about digital stuff? Stanford scientists have spent thousands of hours on this field trip. We spent a lot of time on this, but the next billion copies are free. When I was a kid, my parents bought me an Atari 2600. Okay? It, it came with a free game called Pong. I work in Silicon Valley, and I have the luxury of talking to the people at all the big tech companies. It turns out that Google and Facebook and Samsung and Sony and HTC are all in an arms race to put this technology in your living room this holiday season. It is coming. The question is, what freebie is going to come with their system? As of three days ago, I have a handshake that says that virtual Ischia is going to be delivered for free with at least one of these systems. Yeah, it's great. It's really neat. But it's not just ocean acidification we have to worry about with the environment. We're also doing research to teach people about water conservation. We're also building better communication systems where I can feel like I'm in the room with you in virtual reality so we can eliminate unnecessary travel and save fossil fuel. Virtual reality is coming like a freight train. It's going to be in your living room this holiday season. In fact, the New York Times is, de is delivering millions of them this Sunday if you subscribe to the paper. It's coming. It's up to us to use it for good. Thank you. <laughs>